Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I am not going to be doing a DIY. Instead, I'm going to be reviewing the limited edition Snow Queen Elsa Disney Store doll. Only 8,500 of these dolls were made. I say only very loosely because this edition size is very large for a Disney Store limited edition release. However, they sold out fairly quickly on Shop Disney and at Disney stores everywhere, so you are currently only able to get them through resellers. I was fortunate enough to be able to go to my local Disney store and wait in line to get them. I got both Queen Anna and Snow Queen Elsa, and when you get both, you do get the limited edition Olaf key. I did a review of this key in a video I will link down below if you're interested in seeing how it looks and all the little features on it. But for this video, I'm only going to be doing a review on the Snow Queen Elsa limited edition doll. If you are interested in seeing that, then keep watching. Alrighty guys, this is just an overview of the doll itself. I'm going to go into detail about the different layers because these dolls do come with a holder, which is this, and then it comes with the plastic, and then it has its background, and the doll itself is inside. So I'm going to go over each layer and then we'll get into the doll. So this is the top of the holder as well as the top of the plastic part. I love that it has this blue satin ribbon to go ahead and carry the doll. It is very convenient when you want to be moving it around. And it also is incredibly detailed. It has all of the elements on all four corners. It is absolutely beautiful. I love what they did with the box. It also has this kind of iridescent snowflake pattern. You can see it more when the light hits it and then when it doesn't, it just kind of fades away. The plastic itself says Frozen 2 and it has the Frozen 2 snowflake with the elements. I also love this little blue trim that they put around the opening. The front of the box is stunning as well. It has the little Disney Store logo, all of the snowflakes, it has the 6 plus on there, and it also continues with the snowflake pattern throughout. This is mostly like watercolors, but then it has the snowflakes on the corners. I think that that is so beautiful. Then it also has the little blue trim as it did on the top. I like that sort of consistency with the boxing. It goes all the way down. I love this little like strip that it has all the way down. And then the feature of the front of the box is definitely this little logo. It says Elsa the Snow Queen limited edition, one of 8,500. Like I said, this edition size is quite large. I love how they continued the snowflake pattern on both the plastic and the box itself. It just adds, you know, that sort of extra element of detail. Also, I noticed this while reviewing it right now for you guys, but this pattern right here is the one that Elsa has on her belt in the original traveling outfit. So I like how they brought that pattern into this box as well. Then the same design follows on the other side. So for the first side, it also has a little snowflake on top and the blue cutout. Then it has the elements on the snowflake and it just goes down into clear plastic and the bottom is what has most of the detail. And then this little cutout as well that matches the front. They kept it fairly simple for the sides, but I do like that you can see the doll from every angle. However, there is a lot of box covering, so I do know that some limited edition dolls had less box and more like plastic so you could see the doll better, but um, I think this one has a fairly equal ratio, you know, you can still see Elsa in there, but then you are able to have a beautiful design on the box as well. This is the back, it also continues with the snowflake pattern on the top and then the blue strip on the bottom. It says Frozen 2 and has the Frozen 2 snowflake on there. And then it has kind of a little description of the Disney Store doll. You guys can go ahead and pause if you want to read that. 
but it basically just says the same thing in French on the bottom. And it says Certificate of Authenticity Included, and it has its display stand. This right here, I know that I guess they're legally required to add all of this. And I am glad that it's in the back so you don't see it, but it is kind of ugly. These barcodes kind of do stick out more than this lettering does. I wish it was a little bit more seamless. This is the other side of the box. It also has that window in there so you can see the doll. And it has basically the same design as the other side. I'm going to go ahead and take the box out of the holder. So this is the holder without the actual doll inside. It's kind of like a shell where you can just nestle the doll in there and then carry it around with the ribbon on top. I definitely like that this Disney Store doll includes that because it makes moving it around a lot easier. You don't have to be touching the plastic and then getting your fingerprints all over the plastic. So this is the doll without the holder. This would be what most people use to display. I definitely adore all of the little details that they put into this. They have the little snowflake and then they have the same pattern from Elsa's belt here and here and it just says Elsa the Snow Queen. It has the same pattern as the box basically. Very 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 pretty. It has your little Disney logo there. The top just says Frozen 2 as well and it has the same logo all around. Very stunning. I love how it has the elements on there. So I took the plastic off just so we can go ahead and get a better look without any glare. Her hair is definitely very scrunchy. It's very hard. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's not flexible at all. They used a lot of styling product for this one curl and for her bangs up there. But then this right here is softer. So they only focused the hair styling products, I guess, on one side or what most people would see when purchasing the doll. Her hair and eyelashes are rooted, which definitely gives it a much prettier look. I love how they did her makeup. There you can see her purple eyeshadow, classic and iconic. Her freckles, which are absolutely adorable. I am so glad they put the freckles on this one. The background of the doll itself looks like it's Atahalan. It has all of the elements and snow crystals. It is very, very pretty. Now I'm going to go into reviewing the dress itself. The dress has a lot of controversy because this design is screen printed on, so it's very, very tough and it's not movable at all. It sounds, you know, like plastic. A lot of people were saying that it is very cheap material for the price of the doll itself. This doll did retail for $130, and I have to agree with them. This is extremely stiff, and this line right here, this embroidery, I guess you could say, is not screen accurate. If you look at the actual film itself, Elsa does not have a division here. It just goes straight down. Um, I really am not sure why they did that. Like I said, the material is extremely, extremely stiff. Here is when we start to get a little bit of movement, but that is only because it has the organza fabric in between and the cape is the same fabric as well. So now is when we're getting movement in the dress, but the entire top part is just rock solid. I do like all of the little gems that they put on the bodice of the dress. I do wish that they had put one in the middle of every element like it is in the film. They kind of just scattered them around and called it a day. I also do wish that this upper line here was more accurate. Um, for Elsa's actual dress, it just kind of fades into her skin. For here, they just kind of left this part transparent. And then from here down, they kind of backed it with another fabric so it wouldn't be so transparent. I wish the line up there wasn't so harsh. These sleeves are this kind of sheer material. It is also very stiff because they did do some screen printing down there, if you can see it. So it's just, in general, very, very stiff. I'm not gonna take the doll out of the box. 
so I don't really mind it getting stiff like that but I'm sure people who want to take it out of the box are going to notice that the dress is hard to move around and hard to work with and it does bring the question of whether or not this will crack in the future because it is screen printed on there it does feel like it could possibly crack in many many years from now so that is kind of nerve-wracking I really hope it doesn't but I do think that it might her hair is kind of messily shoved back in here I'm gonna have to go ahead and fix that but this is definitely more touchable and movable than this one curl right there I feel like they just focused all of their attention in making that one curl perfect and then the rest was just like shove it back there they're not gonna see it <laughs> I do like how their hands are posed. I feel like you could put a little bruni in there or a snowflake or something. And then this one you could also do the same if you put it up. Here you can see a little bit better that screen printing of the elements that they did. I do wish that this would have been in the center of her hand, but everything is tied down so tightly that I can't really move much around unless I completely take it out of the box. Even though I do wish that they had used a different material to achieve this look, I do wonder how they would have done these peaks down here as well as all of this up there. It might have been extremely difficult to get all of these details in the dress perfectly right when you're doing 8,500 of them. So Disney just decided to go ahead and screen print so they could mass produce everything and make more consistent quality throughout. Her cape is also that organza material and it has the elements screen printed on there. Now, if you guys don't know what organza is, it's basically a fabric that is traditionally made out of silk, but here I'm pretty sure they used polyester just to keep the cost low. And it is used for wedding veils and that sort of affair. So they used it here for her cape just to give her a little bit of flowiness and movement. There also is a little bit of embroidery here towards the bottom. However, I do wish there would have been a little bit more. I do like how the organza fabric kind of fades into the purple color. As you can see, this is the top of her cape and it is white. And then it slowly starts to have that ombre effect into the purple. I do think that that is very, very, very beautiful. The only embroidery that we actually get in this dress are the elements at the bottom and even that as you can see it has a little bit of fraying they weren't completely done up to par with what i would expect for a limited edition release however i do appreciate you know that little bit of embroidery at least we got something her shoes are pretty much made out of plastic let me get a better angle there for you as you can see, they are sandals, no heels for Snow Queen Elsa. She is out in the Enchanted Forest and she cannot be in heels. So there are the leggings up there as well. I do believe that they are satin, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure, but I am glad that they included them. Last but not least, this is the Certificate of Authenticity. I love how they continued the same pattern from the box on the certificate. And I have number 1,321 out of 8,500. So that is it for my limited edition Snow Queen Elsa doll review. If you are interested in seeing more of these review type videos, then leave a comment down below. I will definitely take that into consideration. I am thinking about doing a review for the Queen Anna doll as well. So if you are interested in seeing that, then give this video a thumbs up. 
Make sure to subscribe. Thank you.